Hello everyone, this is your host Urvashi Chahan. Welcome back to another episode of Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with an update on the much-talked-about NEET UG 2024 results controversy. As I told you yesterday, among several other petitions filed in this matter, a plea sought CBI investigation into the alleged instances of paper leak and malpractices in the conduct of the exam on 5th May this year. Well, today, the top court has issued notice on this plea. The vacation bench of Justices Vikram Nath and Sandeep Mehta observed that the court was conscious that the matter is about the future of 24 lakh students. Therefore, it tagged the cases with earlier petitions raising similar issues which are listed on 8th July. The court was dealing with seven writ petitions. One of the petitions was filed by NEET UG candidates Hiten Singh Kashyap and Palak Mittal, which also raised allegations of exam center manipulations in the NEET UG exam. The plea mentioned that the Gujarat police had registered a case after a teacher offered to solve the NEET exam upon accepting rupees 10 lakhs. Similarly, an FIR in Patna, Bihar, and a magistrate court statement indicates substantial evidence of the NEET paper leak. News reports suggest a ringleader bought the NEET question paper for 60 crores in Uttar Pradesh. In a related update, the Supreme Court today also issued notice on a transfer petition filed by the National Testing Agency seeking to transfer to the top court a petition filed in the Delhi High Court alleging paper leak and irregularities in the conduct of the NEET exam. As you are aware, this exam was conducted on 5th May this year. Before and after the results of the exam were declared, several cases came to be filed alleging irregularities and malpractices such as mass level, paper leak, exam center manipulations, arbitrary grant of grace marks to certain candidates, etc. The next update is about the matter relating to safety of hoardings in the light of the Ghatkopar hoarding collapse incident in Mumbai where last month a 250-ton illegal hoarding on top of a petrol pump collapsed following a dust storm and heavy rains and led to the death of 16 people. The top court had last week expressed concerns about the need to oversee the issue of hoarding collapse amidst the present monsoons in Bombay. The court was hearing the challenge against the Bombay High Court order in a case filed by the Mumbai Corporation of Greater Mumbai, or MCGM regarding the applicability of certain provisions of the Mumbai Municipal Corporation Act to hoardings on railways land. The railways today undertook before the court to ensure that no collapse of hoardings in the central and western railway lines of Mumbai will happen during the monsoon rainy season. Let me tell you, the additional Solicitor General Vikramjeet Banerjee appearing for the railways submitted to the court that the railways is ready to take responsibility for ensuring that the hoardings on the railway lines do not cause any adversities. The matter is now listed for 10th July. Stay tuned. The Supreme Court has rejected the interim relief against demolition of the Prachin Shiv Mandir by the Delhi Development Authority or DDA. This temple is situated near the city's Gita colony and the Yamuna flood plains. The bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kumar and Augustine George Massey asked the petitioner to show the documents supporting the temple's ancient status. It said that ancient temples were built with rock and not with cement and painted. These are all used in recent temples. The background here is that the Delhi High Court recently rejected the plea filed by Prachin Shiv Mandir Awam Akhada Samiti against the DDA's action of demolishing the temple on the ground that the impugned structure was located on the Yamuna flood plains, which have been developed by the DDA and is unauthorized. Against this order, the petitioner approached the division bench of the High Court. However, the plea became infructuous as 15 days time granted by the court to remove the idols got over. Therefore, the petitioners filed an SLP seeking interim relief. The top court has said that it will not entertain the parallel proceedings as the matter is pending before the Delhi High Court. Bhima Koregao accused Mahesh Roth has approached the Supreme Court to seek interim bail for attending the ceremonies relating to the last riots of his grandmother. Routh, who is a forest rights activist, was charged with the offence of indulging in a terrorist act under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of 1967 in connection with the alleged Maoist links over the Bhima Koregaon violence of 2018. He was granted bail by the Bombay High Court, which was later stayed by itself, and the stay order was extended by the Supreme Court. 
The counsel for the National Investigation Agency today sought time to seek instructions and file a reply accordingly. Thus, the vacation bench of Justices P.V. Sanjay Kumar and A.G. Masi, which was hearing the matter, has adjourned the case till 21st June. The Gujarat High Court has stayed release of the film titled Maharaj featuring Junaid Khan, who is son of actor Amir Khan, until the next hearing. This movie, produced by Yashraj Films and slated for release on Netflix today, has been halted by an ad interim order issued by Justice Sangeeta K. Vishen. The decision came in response to a plea filed on behalf of devotees of Lord Krishna and followers of the Pushti Marg sect who argued that the movie could disrupt public order and incite violence against their sect and the Hindu religion. The petitioners claimed that the film is allegedly based on the libel case of 1862, which included severely blasphemous remarks about Hinduism, Lord Krishna and devotional songs and hymns as decided by English judges of the Supreme Court of Bombay. The matter is now scheduled for further hearing on 18th June. Stay tuned with us. And lastly, the Madhya Pradesh High Court has observed that though the collegiate system owes its existence to judge-made law, it is binding on every court, executive and legislature as per Article 141 of the Constitution. The division bench of Acting Chief Justice Sheel Nagu and Justice Amar Nath thus dismissed the plea moved by a lawyer to quash the appointments made to the Office of High Court Judges last November. The court refused to entertain the writ by reasoning that the grounds taken were insufficient and contrary to constitutional provisions. The court said that the constitution does not mandate representation or proportional representation in appointments in validating the petitioner's argument about excess or forward class representation. Similarly, there are no constitutional or legal provisions for SC, ST, OBC or EWS reservation in appointments. In this writ petition, the advocate challenged the legality and validity of the notification issued under Article 217 for appointment of certain persons as judges of the MP High Court on various grounds. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.